Hi, I'm Dan Smathers from Seagate. I'm the chair of the Fast Interrupts Test Group, along with uh, Vice Chair Dr. Kevin Chen of Andes. I'm excited to be here at the RISC-V Summit and give an update on the Click Interrupt architecture. Um, so here's a brief outline of the talk. Uh, first, a rundown of the RISC-V Interrupt controllers, uh, then some background on the Click. Um, I want to highlight uh, two aspects of the Click of uh, interrupt preemption and avoiding context save restores. Um, and then we'll talk about what's next for Click and its path to ratification. Uh, so first, some naming. So uh, Clint was used uh, by Sci-5 um, as their name of where they have their memory mapped control and status associated with software and timer interrupts. But anytime you see a block diagram and it says Clint, what they really mean is um, they, uh, the interrupt handling functionality of the RISC-V privileged architecture, meaning just what's in the current RISC-V privilege spec. So that includes like the CSRs for interrupt pending, interrupt enable, interrupt delegation, cause, status, return, uh, address, and scratch. Um, so I'm going to, in this presentation, instead of saying original uh, privileged uh, architecture interrupt scheme, I'm going to just say Clint, just so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I do want to point out I was talking on the expo hall, um, and someone mentioned ACLINT, and I hadn't heard of it, and I looked it up. And so it was set aside, and there's no plan for ratification. They thought they needed it for AIA, but, but it sounds like they're, they're not going to pursue that. So you can just forget about ACLINT. And so CLINT is uh, the original RISC-V privilege spec architecture. And then what I'm talking about today is CLIC, and I'll give some background on that. Um, I do want to point out that AIA, Advanced Interrupt Architecture, is close to ratification, and that can be broken down into three pieces. Two of them are at the heart level. One is local interrupts, where they kind of expand on Clint, uh, giving priority to Clint, uh, priority uh, settings, so programmable priority on interrupts. And then also they have this uh, message signaled interrupt controller. But uh, some other developments is that the RISC-V privilege spec 1.12 has been ratified, and that added hypervisor and removed uh, user mode interrupts, um, and kind of how that affects the click. And I'm hoping to get some discussion if people uh, raise some questions at the end. We can talk about that. Um, but I also want to point out that resumable, non maskable interrupts is, I think it's close to frozen and maybe ratified soon, so keep your eyes out for that. But just as a summary of all the RISC V interrupt controllers, so we get our are naming right, because some of them sound similar. So we have Clint, the original one, Click, which is what I'm going to talk about today. AIA has three of them, the local interrupts, uh, message signal interrupts, and the advanced Plick at the platform level. And there, you might have seen Plick, because that shows up in a lot of block diagrams. That's actually never been ratified, but it's very close now. I think by the beginning of next year, it'll be ratified. But those are platform level. So just kind of highlighting in a block diagram, so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have our local, both uh, the Clint and Click are interrupt controllers at the heart level, and they can both be paired with a platform interrupt controller like the Plick or a Plick. Um, the Click supports up to 4,096 interrupts, and it replaces three of the Clint CSRs with a set of memory mapped registers. And when, for example, um, Clint int control is where you can set the priority level of each individual interrupt. And uh, Click also adds three additional CSRs. So for some background, um, the Fast Interrupts Task Group was formed in 2008, and there's a great YouTube video you can watch um, where Krista um, describes uh, the RISC-V interrupt architecture and then the motivations for Click. And the main motivation is for embedded devices. So here's some examples of embedded requirements. Um, embedded devices often have a rich set of interrupt events. For example, lots of wired interrupts. I know in, in our SOCs, uh, we tend to only have maybe a handful of interrupts that go to the processor, but from their sources, boy, you know, that quickly, you know, one IP generates 32 interrupts that we just force into one, and another IP, and another IP. So there's, you know, lots of wired interrupts. If you want to just send them directly to the core, that's not possible with the click. Um, it's also important to quickly service critical interrupts. Um, so interrupt latency, and I give this example of a 1% low battery event 
that all of a sudden all those calculations that you did, didn't want to interrupt because that would ruin things, once you get a low power event, that kind of trumps everything. So, um, it, oh, that's my, jumps ahead here. So, um, there's also interrupt throughput requirements, handling back-to-back -back interrupts. Um, and so one question, can you reduce context switch overhead and can you uh, reduce the interrupt handler instruction count? So um, one of Click's highlights is, is uh, hardware support for interrupt preemption. Um, I kind of say interrupt preemption is the VIP line of the interrupt world. Um, and so it's possible to manage these critical interrupts in software, but Click just adds some additional assistance to make that easier. Um, so starting off with different privilege modes. So different pri privilege mode interrupt preemption is easy. Um, higher privilege mode interrupts preempt lower privilege modes. And uh, they, different privilege modes have their own set of uh, CSRs for hardware saved context. Um, so interrupt handlers still uh, need to save and restore any of the general purpose X registers they use. Um, but that one is supported by both Clint and Click just automatically. Um, but now, uh, when all the interrupts are the same privilege level, we call them horizontal interrupts. So interrupt handlers save context at the beginning of the handler and restore context at the end. But when they're horizontal, they also have to additionally save those interrupt CSRs. So I want to talk about software-managed horizontal interrupt preemption. So um, if IRQ enables the global status enable, um, automatically the next interrupt, uh, highest priority interrupt that's pending there uh, would interrupt the, the interrupt handler you're in, even if it's a lower priority. And so what software has to do is it has to go in and disable lower priority IRQs uh, to make that work. And if you have a small number of, of interrupts, um, that's not too hard to do, but it uh, gets a little bit complicated with large number of interrupts. So what Click does is Click adds a previous interrupt level field to MCOS, um, and it also adds int status state. And so now horizontal interrupts are only taken if the next pending interrupt level is greater than the current level. So this level can be additionally dynamically qualified by a new int threshold uh, CSR. But just this is kind of what you want, where higher priority interrupts just are kind of automatically handled without software management. You still have to do the context save and restores um, in each interrupt handler. Um, so another uh, benefit to Click is uh, being able to handle back-to-back -back interrupts. So you have your main code flow, and then IRQ1 comes along. You have to save the CSR, the X registers that main uses, so save its context at the beginning, and at the end of IRQ1, you restore it. But then if it's followed immediately by another interrupt, um, that IRQ2 does that same context save and then context restore. And so the question is, can that be avoided? And so both Clint, AIA, local, and Click all have methods to identify, oh, at the end of the handler, I'm just going to check this. Is there another pending interrupt? And do I need to restore the context? And so Click uses a new CSR called next I. Wanted to point out that the click interrupt handler sequences. Um, so we do have some example interrupt handlers in the spec. Um, they have you know annotated, helpful notes describing how to take advantage of click features. But here's just a table I created, of, so you can kind of compare that the click supports up to a very large number of wired interrupts, um, has programmable priority, hardware support for preemption. You can determine if you can skip that redundant context restore, save restore, and it has interrupt threshold. But I did want to kind of point out, so what normally, you know, that last table is kind of comparing one to one, but uh, usually you'll see Clint with a Plick. Um, and so just want to compare Clint with Plick versus Click. Um, and so kind of breaking down this table where you're combining things with a Click. So, you know, w when you have Clint with Plick, you can support up to a large number of interrupts, and you do have programmable priority on the PLIC interrupts. Um, but yeah, you, you don't have the hardware support for preemption, so it does take software overhead. Um, and you can't tell if you can skip the redundant context restore 
from the PLIC because it just has a single signal signaling to you that it has an interrupt available. So it just, just take a little bit more uh, software overhead. Uh, in Krista's uh, 2018 presentation, he talked about what are the interrupt ABI options, and not much has changed in that since then. Um, so we still have the regular C function that saves and restores all of the X registers, um, but we also have the inline handler GCC interrupt attribute, which is Kali save, so that, that way you can just save the ones that you're actually using, so that's more efficient. But I did wanna give a shout out to the PS ABI task group because I saw earlier this week that they are planning this year to uh, work on customizations for an embedded ABI proposal. So I have this link, and I, I hope it's the right one, but you know, please you know, try and reach out to that group if that's something you're interested in and following. And then kind of what's next for Click? Um, so we still have some outstanding GitHub issues. You know, one of the things is that with the new 1.12 1 1 uh, privilege spec, uh, there's now hypervisors defined. And so we're trying to figure out for members, is, is hypervisor support something that we want to add to Click, or will that just be a future extension option that gets added later? Um, and also, does anyone have plans to use the AIA with Click, uh, in ca which case maybe we could investigate some, some options for that? But we have uh, document cleanup and deciding on optional feature groupings. Um, and so that's where, you know, getting... Uh, feedback from members would be useful too. And of course I have uh, remaining ratification tasks, but our, our goal is to try and ratify this year if we can. Um, you know, part, of, part of the reason, so I'm just moving to question and answer, I did want to point out that we do have a GitHub location and we have a wiki that kind of lists our current status. Um, and I think I, I ran a little fast there, but uh, does anyone have any questions or answers, or questions? <laughs> well, so currently in the click spec, um, we have user mode interrupts in there because it was in there before, and we haven't taken it out yet. Um, Krista thinks that user mode interrupts might come back into the privilege spec uh, because apparently uh, that's showing up in other, other ISAs. <laughs> um, but that, that's definitely something like we in the embedded space, we kind of want to have user in interrupts, um, not so much for security, but for it's nice uh, for safety reasons that you have a user um, and then when your code's running in user, you don't want like a, a bug to modify if you're using virtual memory. You don't want that to have a chance, you know, so the supervisor handles all your virtualization that way. And if, if you only have machine and supervisor modes, you, yeah, it's just a little more awkward to try and protect that. But yeah, that is something that we'd, I'd love to hear back, you know, if, if that's something that, user, that people want is, is user mode interrupts back. Right, well, yeah, I mean, it's just, Krista says, whatever we do when we write our spec, make sure there's room for it, so don't count it out. Um, but yeah, currently you won't find it in the 1.12 spec. Yeah. Just curious, okay, go ahead, yeah. Is there a portion of the click split spec or best known method that deals with helping debuggers backtrace into the source of the traps and interrupts? Right, yeah, no, we don't have much on triggers. Um, so we did work with uh, the debug group, um, and they did give us a dedicated pin. So there is, like in their spec, there is something that says external, I think it says external triggers, and then we kind of match that up with, there's a couple registers, but yeah, we do not have much written down on how, how that would work. Does is, is that kind of answer your question? Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. Yeah, we don't have anything written down there in the spec for that. That's a, that's a good thing to I'll take a note of that. Thanks. 
Just curious, anyone have a show of hands of anyone that's ac actually using Click right now? Okay. Well, yeah. That uh, we do have, like I've listed on our, our wiki, um, six companies that have uh, products with the Click. But I, I would like to know, you know, how popular this is, and I, I kind of assume that once it gets ratified, you know, more people might uh, be interested in joining. Okay, I think that's all I have. Thanks so much, everyone. Mm -hmm.